It's Premiership final time. First versus second from the regular season. Equal on league points. Northampton Saints versus Bath for the Premiership title this coming Saturday at Twickenham. Hello amateurs and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be here throughout the end of the season and beyond. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, the Premiership season, it's such a huge, long slog. So many games over such a long period of time. But then you get there, the Premiership final, and it is a sellout. And the weather is meant to be fine. Sunny day at Twickenham. Apparently the fastest ever selling out of, of a Premiership final. So that is remarkable and great news for the sport in general. Now then, let's look at the build-up, where these teams have come from. The semi-finals last week, both these teams, Northampton and Bath, are known for their free-flowing rugby, known for scoring some beautiful tries, known for being creative and ambitious. But really interestingly, both of them won their semi-finals last week through grit and determination. They never really hit their flow at any, you know, more than for a couple of minutes at a time. But their set piece and their defence was what really won them those games against two teams. Uh, Saracens and Sale, who you would stereotypically think would be higher or, or better in those areas. So it just shows what all-round teams, Bath and Northampton, are. Also important in those games was the scrum. I would say that the scrum was a huge factor in them both winning those games. So it's going to be super interesting to see how that plays out this coming week. In terms of injuries... There's, there's none or no uh, further ones that I'm aware of. So off the back of those semi-finals, they can both relax for a week. And, you know, typically the teams this week will be doing very little. They'll have their, they'll have done their research earlier in the season. You know, they've played each other twice already. So they know which what each other's team's about. They know where the threats are. They'll know that detail already. This week will be about getting refreshed in the mind, just getting the tiny little details right, but most importantly, being raring to go come Saturday. In terms of the semi-finals, both brilliant games, as I talked about last week on the channel. And the clubs are doing a great job at the moment in creating some content around this. Both of them have, have released short films, really, about their semi-final victories. Uh, quite different. Bath is really sort of cinematic and just really focused on this year's game and it's a beautiful video I suggest you go and watch that if you can whereas Northampton's really got behind the scenes they looked at the pain from the previous two semi-final defeats over the last year you know in the dressing room in the huddle you hear what people like Lewis Ludnam, Courtney Laws and more recently Finn Smith are saying uh, in those environments and it is great we love the behind the scenes stuff so definitely go and watch the Northampton one if you can and I'd encourage any other clubs to get out there and really get behind the scenes if you can. It's what the fans want to see. We want to know these players. We want to know what makes them tick, not just what we see on a Saturday afternoon. Um, now, interestingly, as well, just while we're talking about both teams together here, you know, I kind of mentioned earlier that it was it was almost the set piece and defence which won them their semi-finals. And you look at the front fives of these teams. And neither of them are rock stars. You know, there's there's a few big, bigger names in there. There's internationals for sure. But neither of these teams have got rock star front fives. So, you know, maybe this is a change in the guard. Maybe this is, these are the guys that are going to go on for the next number of years in the Premiership and be the real stars uh, front five forwards. For Bath this week, Charlie Yules just sort of talked about how this season, it's almost like signing for a new club for him. He had his little stint away in South Africa and he's come back and he looks a different player this year. And he puts a lot of their success, a lot of Bath's success down to consistency. The consistency of preparation that Johan van Graan has put into this side. And that is clear for all to see. Bath are not just consistent week to week, but they're consistent within a game as well. So they seem to be able to, if they get, you know, if they concede a try or whatever, they're back at their game. They're back into what they do really quickly. So, um, yeah, that's that's a big one for Bath. In terms of Saints, Fraser Dingwall has kind of said that they won the semi-final the previous week because of confidence, maybe just more confident this year. He said... We've got the same pieces that we've had in previous years, but it's just that extra time together that's made the difference. 
Now, I question that slightly um, because they might have had some of the same pieces, but uh, big Trevor Davidson on the tight end has certainly improved him come scrum time. He just does not move. And I love the story as well. You know, he's played down the leagues a little bit, taken his time, come up and played a ton of games for Newcastle before being picked up by Northampton. And he's done a brilliant job for them this season. Rock solid scrum time. And also Pearson on the open side. Another big impact. And for him to get picked ahead of Lewis Ludlam, club, uh, previous club captain last week, shows a lot about what he brings to this side. And the other thing that's slightly different for Northampton this year, and there was a huge amount made of this at the start of the season, was their pre-season, their off-season, where they put on a number of kilos per player in terms of being heavier and stronger and more powerful. And that certainly shows in their attack and defence. They are um, they get further through the contact. They win more post-contact metres. They have more dominant tackles than previous seasons. And you can literally see it. Like You can literally see it on these guys. They look bigger. They look heavier. They look more powerful. So I'm sure confidence was a big thing. And, and Dingwall was certainly not... Uh, lying in that respect or, or undervaluing it but there's definitely some other pieces there as well okay selections not released yet as uh, as i record this video so let's have a look let's have a think what might these teams select now um there were very few changes for either side going into the semi-finals i think both teams know exactly what their best 15 is i think they know exactly what their best 23 is and i don't see there being too many like tactical choices, you know, where two, two players are very similar in terms of their output and maybe you pick one player for this scenario and one player for the other. These teams, Bath and Northampton, match up almost identically. They really are. Like if you go player for player, they're really similar. You know, um, a big tackling, abrasive seven, you know, a, a big carrying, abrasive number eight. And then you look at the sixes, tall, uh, rangy with Ted Hill and Courtney Laws and you can go through the entire squad and they really match up very well um, possibly the only difference is at halfback where Saints have got a more running nine and a more uh, conservative 10 slightly more conservative and Bath are the other way around but apart from that you go through it and they really are very well matched so what can we expect to see oh, I was going to say actually Maybe there is one slight selection change that might happen. And I don't know whether they will. It's a, a real toss-up for me. But Alfie Barbary was not at his rambunctious best in the semi-final. He got subbed after about 50 minutes uh, to his clear disappointment. So I wonder I wonder whether they might use that and add extra fuel so that if, when he comes on later in the game, if they play him off the bench, then he might bring a whole load of fury um, that he couldn't bring in the semi-final or whether they think maybe he's you know being brought off early will give him that fire back to get into the game and show us what he can do from the start uh, that would be an interesting one that's the only potential selection change that I foresee otherwise I expect the 23s aside from any injuries that I'm not aware of to be exactly the same now in terms of playing style as I mentioned, both teams like to move the ball. Both teams like to play pretty expansively. They can they can do the territory and all that kind of stuff when it's appropriate as well, but they want to play. And I think after the nervousness of the semi-finals, I think we'll see that. I think particularly if we get a try early on, I think we'll see both teams really uh, trying to explore the width of the Twickenham pitch. I expect the quality to be higher in the final than it was in the semi-finals. Semi-finals are notoriously nervy affairs, especially when they're close like they were. But I think when you get to the final, both teams will somehow just be more relaxed and just put it out there. It's the final day of the season, no matter what happens. So I expect to see a higher level of quality, therefore potentially fewer scrums and, and that being less of a factor. Now, I'm going to do a selection reaction video later this week. Once we know what the teams are, I'll do my match prediction in that video as well and let you know who I think is going to win but this is just build up build up material what do you think where do you think these teams are coming from you know what kind of seasons do you think they've had any factors that I haven't mentioned that you think will play a key role uh, in this game at Twickenham on Saturday let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind it helps other people find it and you can subscribe there you can watch that one next and do not forget to get out and play.